Good morning, everybody. You are all welcome to Sunday School. I hope you had a nice week. Bless the name of the Lord for that. Shall we pray? Everlasting Father, King of Glory, we thank you. We praise your holy name for another opportunity to be in your presence this morning. Accept our thanks and praises. Father, as we are about to start this lesson, come and start with us. Teach us, O oh Lord, teach our hearts. Write your word on the fleshy table of our heart and help us to be good boys and girls. And at the end, O oh Lord, Father, help us to see you in glory. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You are welcome to Primary Pass class. Our lesson this morning is Lesson 16A, titled An Amazing Message. And our memory verse is, she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. Our text is taken from Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 to 25. Luke chapter 1 verses 26 to 38. But we are just going to read a few verses. Matthew chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. Luke chapter 1, verse 27 and 28. Shall we open our Bible to Matthew chapter 1, children? Verse 20. But while he taught on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, Fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Let's go to Luke, Luke chapter 1. We are going to read 27 and 28. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary, 28. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that art highly favored the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women let's close our bible and listen to the lesson children look up children can you see the picture there yes who can tell me the picture there an angel yes an angel have you ever seen an angel before? No, neither do I. I've never seen an angel before as well. But the angel appeared to Mary and her room was filled with bright lights. Mary was afraid and she went on her knees and bowed down her head. And the angel said, Mary, you are highly favored. You are blessed. Because God is happy with you. And Mary was like, what type of greeting is this? And the angel said, I am Angel Gabriel. I am sent to you by God. You are going to conceive and bear a son. And he shall be called Jesus. Mary did not understand the message because she's not married. And Mary said it, I know no man, how can I conceive? And the angel said, the Holy Spirit shall dis descend upon you. God can do anything. Yes, anything God can do. And the angel left Mary and Mary accepted it. Let it be done unto me according to their word. So also children, we should 
receive the word of God, when we hear good news, we should accept it and be happy because it is from God. Mary said, yes, this is from God. And she took it and she was happy. Joseph saw Mary that she was conceived and Joseph was troubled because the angel told Mary that she's going to conceive. But Joseph did not know about it. And Joseph was really troubled in his sleep. The angel appeared to him in a dream and told him, Joseph, take thy wife Mary, for that which she's conceived of is of the Holy Spirit. She's going to bear a son, a special baby called Jesus. That is the gift of God's love for us. Jesus is going to save his people, the whole world, from their sin. And when Joseph woke up, he was happy and took Mary, his wife. And both of them were happy because of the good news the angel gave them. That the two of them have been chosen to be the parents of God's son, that special baby. Children, don't you think we two should be happy about this special baby, the gift of God's love for us? Our key statement is, Jesus, the greatest gift. Jesus, the greatest gift. Our activities for today's lesson, ages 2 to 5, find and circle the words in the puzzle. Ages 6 to 8, find and connect the dots to bring out the picture of the angel. Our next week lesson is lesson 16C titled born in bethlehem and the memory verse is john chapter 3 verse 16. thank you children that is the end of our lesson bye good morning boys and girls you are welcome to answer class hope you had a lovely week with families and with friends the title of our lesson today is A Look at the Problem. And our key verse is He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. John chapter 8, verse 12. And our text is taken from Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 to 22, chapter 11, verses 28 to 30, and chapter 16 verses 24 to 27, but we are going to be reading Matthew chapter 4, 18 to 22, and chapter 11, 28 to 30. Let's pick our Bibles and read together. Chapter 4, 18. And Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers, 19. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. 20. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. 21. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets. And he called them, and immediately left their sheep and their father and followed him. Chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest 
for your souls. 30. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let's close our Bibles and put it on one side. You might be wondering why I have this train set. Let's watch and see. As you can see, the engine is going by itself and the carriages are left by themselves. Without the engine, these two cannot go by themselves. They need the engine in order to get to their destination. We too, we need Jesus Christ, our engineer, in order to get to our destination. Where is our destination? Our destination is in heaven. And if we want to get to heaven, we need to follow Jesus, our engineer. We need to follow his leading. We need to follow his teachings. We need to allow him to guide us and lead us every step of the way in order for us to get to our destination. In our lesson of today, we can see how Jesus chose his first disciples. He first of all chose Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother. He said, follow me and I will make you teachers of men. The Bible said, straightway they left their nets and they followed him. Next, he chose James and John, the sons of Zebedee. They were mending their nets with Zebedee their father. As he called them, they left their nets and their father, and they followed him. When he said, follow me, it doesn't mean they should accompany him. He meant that they should watch him, they should copy him, they should follow his examples. That was what he meant by follow me. When he called them, he taught them how to do things, how to relate with him, how to relate with others. He taught them how to behave, how to react in life. He wants us to, to have good relationship with him and with others. Our text in Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 talks about a yoke. Let's have a look at the picture of a yoke. A yoke is when a weak animal is yoked with a strong animal to do work together. Jesus is strong and we are weak. If we are yoked together with Jesus, he will lead, instruct, point us the way, carries the heavy end of the load. He will share every difficulty and problem with us. Jesus' yoke is easy and his burden is light. Jesus will lead us to heaven. But Satan's yoke of sin is heavy and it will lead one to destruction. It is in an answer story. Nasser couldn't get along with anyone. First, he was upset with his brother who wore his shirt to school. He was upset with mom who didn't do anything about it. Upset with Emmett at school. Upset with the football coach. Then to, cut, to top it up, his brother ripped his, his shirt and that made him to be so angry that he went to the garden and to look at the car he was trying to repair. When he tried and he couldn't, he said, what else could have gone wrong? As he was doing this, his dad came over and said, son, were you able to repair the transmission? He said, no. Then his father said, let's look at it together. As they looked at it, his father advised him that if the first transmission is working, all other things will work because the problem was the first transmission. So at the end of the day, as he lay, lay um, in his bed, 
He started to think, if the first transmission work, every other thing will work. Oh, that means I'm the problem. Oh, and he knew that he needed help. He, he knew the person who could help him. That is Jesus. He cried out to Jesus and he prayed, confessed all his sins to Jesus and Jesus forgave him. Everything changed. Just because he looked at the problem and he applied the, his daddy's advice to the problem. He promised that he will treat others as, as if Jesus were to be standing right beside him. Everybody around him knew the difference in Nasser's life. We too, we need to be changed and have good relationship with others around us. We need to have good relationship with Jesus. How can we do this? First, we must acknowledge that we are sinners. Confess all our sins to Jesus. Believe in the blood that Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary. And repent of all those sins that we have done. Then Jesus will forgive us. We promise him that we will not do all those bad things again. That is how we too can have good relationship with Jesus and good relationship with others. We will make Jesus the first in our lives, just as Nasa promised that Jesus will be first in his life. Let's look at some of the questions. Question one, how does your relationship with Jesus affect your relationship with others? Answer is, having a relationship with Jesus gives you joy, peace, desire to show love to others. All this will make your relationship with others better because they will see the changes in you and that will attract them to Jesus. Question two, why must we be saved before we understand the guidance God will give? When we are saved, we will have a change of heart so we will be able to better understand God's guidance. Being saved make us in tune with God. The statement for our lesson is Jesus lights up my life. The activity is fishers of men. Our next week lesson is lesson 119. And the title is Warning Signs. The key verse is obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for the watch for your souls. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17. This is the end of our lesson. Let us pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, we thank you for this lesson. A look at the problem. Thank you for all the lessons you taught us. Thank you, Lord, that you taught us how to be saved, how to have good relationship with you, God, and with others. Thank you for Nasser's life. As you change Nasser's life, come and change all our lives. Help us to be in harmony with you and with others. Thank you for the primary part lessons. Thank you for all our teachers. Thank you for everything, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. See you next week. Bye. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining today's Sunday School. We hope and pray you enjoyed. Have a wonderful week ahead. God bless you. Bye.